Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James and his special guest of top spiritual men and women will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. All righty. Well, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this morning's fellowship, where we're going to continue on to learn about the seed, the seed of Christ within us. And this morning, I'm, the topic is on how to get born again, how to get born again, and a little bit of what that covers, what we have with that new birth, which is just tremendous. But to start off with, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians, the breakfast of champions. Ephesians chapter 2. Even when we were dead, it says, in sin, but as two sins, hath quickened us or made us alive together with Christ by grace ye are saved. Grace is divine favor, and it is a gift from God. See, one time we were dead in sins, dead to sins, but we were quickened, made alive together with Christ. With Christ. And that's going to be interesting as we continue with this teaching. And by grace, divine favor, it was just given to us, ye are saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places is in italics, in the heavenlies, in Christ Jesus. As, you, as we're reading here, look how many times the name Jesus Christ is used. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through who? Christ Jesus. Pretty neat. For by grace ye are saved through faith or it's the Greek word pistis, believing. We are saved by grace. By grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. It is a simple gift of God that we receive when we have some obedience to God's word, which we're going to look at a little later. But it's by grace. Not of works. Oh, we've got to read it, don't we? Number verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So nobody can boast. You know what I mean? No one can boast. It is a free gift from God to you. Do you want it? Do you want it? It's free. You just have to do some simple obedience, which we're going to look at later. For ye are his workmanship, the workmanship of of him, God, right? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. See, the first time that we uh, we get born, right, we are the workmanship of our mommy and daddy, right? They got together, an egg and a sperm got together, and we were natural people. We were so what you see on the outside, we are the workmanship of our mother and father. That's fairly easy to see, right? In the natural birth, a person of body and soul is legally of the adversary, the devil. When you are just body and soul, you belong to the devil. You are a part of his kingdom. You are citizens of the adversary. And he has control and can take care of your life terribly the way he does. <laughs> Not good. But once you're born again, body, soul, and spirit, you are legally of God and of the citizenship of God. You've changed citizenship. You're guided by the flesh, and that's all you have is your five senses, you now have something greater that you can utilize, right? And to be born again is to legally be born of God. See, God recreates within us the new spirit, Christ within you. It is pretty cool. 
Now, there's a teaching out there that everybody's got a little bit of God. Well, that's not true. I am only the father of the children that I father. That's it. And God is only a father of the children that he is fathered. With the seed, right? We looked at last week, of Christ within you, Holy Spirit. And we get this by obedience to God's word, which we're going to look at very quickly here. But that seed from God, which is God in Christ in you, and this seed is eternal life. And we know this because of the word of God. That's how we know. So let's look at how to get born again. And let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And we're going we're gonna to read verse 17 first. And verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing, and hearing by the word of what? God. And some translations have by the word of Christ. And if you and I have no problem with either because we read the word of God and what does the word of God talk about? Christ. Jesus Christ is the subject of God's word from Genesis three fifteen to Revelation twenty one twenty two, right? Yeah. It's the it's that's what the word of God is. It's about Jesus Christ. So as we hear the word of God, it builds our faith, our believing, and then we can believe God's work. You see that? That's why when we come to a fellowship or we start do a study on God's word, we're learning about who Jesus Christ is, who God is, and we're learning about the new birth and what we have. And then let's go to verse 9. And this is what we need to be obedient to. No works involved, just believe. And listen, it will really blow your mind. It says that if we shall, shall puts it in the absolute, if we shall confess, and confess means to say it, to say it. And it says here, with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus. We confess Jesus Christ as Lord and shall Absolute once again, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, if you hear the word of God and you believe it, then you will start to believe that God raised him from the dead because the scriptures tell us this. And of all the religions and all the people that ever lived, Jesus Christ is the only one that's ever gotten up from the dead. Buddha never got up from the dead. Muhammad never got up from the dead. Jesus Christ is the only one that has been raised from the dead. And stayed up. And stayed up. And so, okay? So when we do that, God creates seed in us. And we confess the Savior from sin, not as some people have taught, that we confess our sins. If you were to confess your sins, that would be work. Probably be hard work. Can you remember all your sins? Well, part of the ridiculousness of it is you could never remember all your sins. It would be a work that you could hardly ever accomplish. It wouldn't matter how you did it, you wouldn't be able to get that. So we do not confess our sins, but we confess the Lord Jesus Christ, as Lord in our life. And part two is, believe God raised him from the dead. In the moment that we do that, it is now body, soul, and spirit. And that spirit is seed, and it is the seed of Christ within you. Can you imagine that? The seed of Christ within you. And the last word in verse 9 is the word saved, and that's the Greek word sozo, and that means to be made whole. In other words, before you get born again, you are body and soul. Within the body and soul, you get all your information through means of the five senses. The five senses. You can read and understand things. You can learn how to build a car, 
build a house, you know, do whatever things you'd like to do. But not until, and you can also read about Jesus Christ. And that's why faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. And then you can believe. And when you do, the miracle of all miracles happens, and you receive the gift, the seed of Christ within you. And that is just tremendous. It's just one of those things. Who wouldn't want to have that? I, I actually think it's stupidity upon stupidity not to want to get born again. To have that extra, not that extra, but great Christ within you. Now let's look at verse 10. It says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Who would like to be right with God? See, that's what I mean. It's, it's about, beyond stupidity not to want these things. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And now we receive salvation. Because by confessing and believing that God raised him from the dead, that makes a connection with God. Before you're born again, you have no connection with God. God is spirit, and God places within us spirit, and now we have a connection with God. We have so much that's available in the new birth that it's every once in a while, no matter how long you've been in the Word, you ought to just sit and think about it sometimes. Because it's Christ in you. Adam received Holy Spirit upon a condition. Because he didn't do the condition, he lost it. Now, the greatest thing that was ever done is the, the ability to get born again, to have that seed of Christ within us. The church is never told to have more faith. Never told to have more faith. <laughs> it's never told to have more love. It's never told to have more righteousness. It's never told to have more sanctification. It's never told to have more justification. You know why? It's all wrapped up in that seed. Your first birth, you have the seed, right? You get born, and every part of your genetics is wrapped up in that seed. The reason you have blue eyes or green eyes, all those things were all in that seed. When you get born again, everything is wrapped up in that seed. Everything that you have is wrapped up in that seed. We know this because the Word of God says so. That's how we know. We know because the Word of God says so, and we act on the Word of God, which is to believe it. We believe the Word of God. The senses should be a servant to the real you, which is Christ in you. To the real you, which is Christ in you, which is spirit. How do you know? Because the word of God says so. How important is this wonderful word of God? See, I don't believe that true Christianity is a religion. I don't believe that. I don't even really like the word Christianity that much. I, I like much better the word believer because that's who we are. We believe what Jesus Christ accomplished for us. We believe the, what the Word says about it, and we act that way. We are believers. Something else. You know what God calls us in his Word? Saints. He calls us saints. And the word saints, it means to be set apart. So we're set apart. God calls us saints. And I believe being a saint is a way of life with a father with his sons and daughters and the family of God, because that's what we're part of, the family of God, all of us working together. And I'll share something else. God is very concerned, mostly, number one, with the individual, with the individual, each individual. He cares about you. And then you and the other saints work together in love and and so forth, like a family. So it's pretty neat. In the world, it's always the, what's the better good for everybody? 
God always says, what's the best for you? Isn't that neat? Because God wants you to have his best. And we do that in a family where we all can help one another. Hey, the proof that Jesus was, did what God wanted him to do was that he was raised from the dead. And we have proof that God raised him from the dead. What's that proof? We speak in tongues. And you also can learn how to speak in tongues and magnify God. That's the proof. You know what religion is? Religion is what men do to men, not God. I want to show you some things here. Go to the Gospel of John, Chapter 3. Gospel of John, Chapter 3, and in verse 16. Now, this, these verses are, uh, we'll start in 15. These verses are very familiar to us. Whosoever believeth in him, and this is talking about Jesus Christ, should not perish should not perish, but have everlasting life. If all we got out of this deal was everlasting life, that might be worth it, huh? But we get so much more. We get so much more. Verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life we now have everlasting life that is pretty cool we can't lose it we can't lose it let's go to John chapter 10 John chapter 10 in verse 27 I just want to point this one out here it says my sheep hear my voice this is Jesus Christ speaking it says, his sheep hear his voice, okay? They hear. The uh, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. People speak that word of God to others. They hear it, and faith cometh by hearing. Jesus says, my sheep will hear my voice. The goats will never hear the word. You can speak to them as long as you want. They're not his sheep. And I know them, and they follow me. So you know what happens to us? We start hearing that word of God. We become followers of Jesus Christ. And when we believe what it says in what we read earlier in Romans 10, 9, and 10, we get that seed of Christ within us, which is pretty cool, which is eternal life. Go to Romans chapter 6. I'm going to show you now some things that are really cool about the new birth that we should see and really like and, and gravitate to. In chapter 6 and verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life. We get eternal life. Go to 1 John, just before Revelations almost, and we're going to go to chapter 1, verse 1. 1 John, and it says, That which was from the beginning, which we heard, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, which we have seen with our eyes. We looked at our Bibles, right? Which we have looked upon in our hands of handle of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life. It's eternal life. The minute you get born again, you receive eternal life. The minute that happened, which was manifested unto us. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 25. It says, And this is the promise that he hath, promised us even what eternal life see the god word the word of god seems to tell us that we have eternal life right let's go to chapter 5 in first john and verse 11 it says and this is the record we're reading god's word and that's the record right that god has given us eternal life and this life is in his son 
he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Simple? Okay. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know, not question, not doubt, that ye may know that ye have what? Eternal Eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. What's the name of the Son of God? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That's what I think. Back and forth, each way, you know what I mean? But it's Jesus Christ. Pretty cool. And look at verse 14. It says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. See, receive the Holy Spirit. We now have a connection with God. We've got a connection, a really good connection, better than any Internet, better than phone, Moss code, smoke sink, better than any. And this is the confidence that we have in it, that if we ask anything according to his will, how do you find God's will? It's in God's word. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, how do we know that he hears us? Because God's word tells us. If you don't believe God's word, then none of this will make any sense. You must as well just throw it away. But for those of us who believe God's word, we know this is true because it says it in God's word. And it says, and we know that we have the petition that we desire. We know we have the answers. Go down to verse 20. It says, and we know that the Son of God has come. We know it. Right? We know that he's come and have given unto us an understanding. Where do we get the understanding? In God's word. And it goes in our minds too, right? (laughs) That we may know him, not question, not doubt, know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, what's his name? Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. We just believe what that wonderful word of God says. Christ in you, the seed, Holy Spirit, now part of us. You do not get saved, I mentioned this once before, by confessing your sins, because you could never do that. And it's not by feelings. You know what feelings do? They come and go. You might feel good today, and you might feel bad tomorrow. Might not feel like you got it tomorrow. Well, you know what? You have it because the Word of God says so. The Word of God is not your feelings. You come in one day and you go, man, you know, I can conquer the world. I've got it. i got this feeling. And you know what? I went to this meeting and it was so good. The spirit was rolling. And man, I got it. And then the next day you go, well, I don't know. It might not be true. <laughs> But you don't go by feelings. Feelings come and go. You go by the truth in God's word. Everything is in the seed. We looked at it and we spoke about the seed of our mommy and daddy, and that gives us a lot of the traits that we have today. Everything is in that seed. Well, the same thing is true in the new birth, the seed of Christ within you. Everything's in that seed. And I want to look at just a few things that we have in that seed. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1, 13. The phrase in verse 12, the very last part, it says, the inheritance of the saints in light. I just point that out because God calls us saints. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Remember earlier I said that once before we got born again, we were part of the adversary's kingdom. This is what, where I get that information. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son or by his dear son. Jesus Christ did it. See, we were once part of the kingdom, citizenship, legally of the adversary. Jesus Christ came 
and made it available, available for us to be translated into the kingdom or the citizenship of his dear son or the citizenship of heaven, of the citizenship of heaven. And that is in the new birth in that seed of Christ within you. Pretty wild. The natural man of body and soul legally belongs to the adversary. The born-again one of body, soul, and spirit legally belongs to God. We have rights. In the United States, we have the Bill of Rights, and those are our rights to do stuff, right? And and you can read it. It's a, a paper that's available, right? Well, we have rights, too, and those rights are written in the church epistles. They are written in the church epistles, written directly to us. We have those rights, sometimes called the sonship rights, and that is just one of them. I don't list sonship rights. There are too many to list. You have to read. They're all throughout the church epistles, but let's look at a few, Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we can, you know, just like a citizen of the United States can claim their rights, we as a citizen of heaven can claim our rights. And in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians and verse 30, it says, But of him, God, and when it's of, what is it? See. Right? Remember that? That's why I took so much time with seed last week. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God, once again, of God, is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Those are part of your life. It's in that seed. How do you know that? The word of God tells us. That according as he, it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. That should be simple. I mean, there's none of these things we could do on our own, right? right. None of them we could do on our own. Go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. And we're going to start in verse 21. But now... The righteousness of of God, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that what? Believe. When you get that seed of Christ, what do you get? Righteousness. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And being justified freely by his grace, right, divine favor, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins. So one of our rights is what? Remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he may be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So we're justified. Look at the rights that we have. Let's go to chapter 5, verse 5. I said earlier that we are never told in the church, the church is never told to have more faith. It's never told to have more righteousness, sanctification, all these things we are looking at. And I said, we're never told to have more love. Right? What does it say in uh, Romans 5, 5? And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by what? The Holy Ghost, which is given to us. At the moment of the new birth, we receive the love. So why do some people act like they have more faith? They act like they have more righteousness. They act like they have more love. Because they changed their mind or renewed their mind to what the word of God says they have. 
that we have what the Word of God says we have, and we know this because it is in God's Word. Now we have to practice that. We have to practice the love of God. We have to practice our righteousness. We have to practice what the Word of God says we have. And the more we practice it, the more we read it, the more we believe it, the more we act like Jesus Christ. And that's our goal, to be more and more like Jesus Christ. This verse is just a wonderful verse. And that word shed, God shed abroad in our hearts. Some translations use the word flooded, flooded our heart with love. So there's no question that we got love. The only question is, what are you doing with it? How are you utilizing it? How do you learn that? How do you learn the keys of loving it's in God's word, and it's true because it's, it says so in God's word. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. I added this from our sharing uh, yesterday morning. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. In the new birth, you are called. That's one of your rights. They're called for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. We're to be like Jesus Christ, his son, that he might be the firstborn among many. Jesus Christ was the first and we're the many. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he also called. So we're predestinated, we're called, and to whom he called, then he also justified, so we're justified, and to them who he justified, them, he also glorified. These are your rights. You are righteous, sanctified, glorified, justified, and I'm not, you, you have to read the rest of the church epistles to see all that you have. And it's all wrapped up in that seed of Christ within you. We got that at the new birth. That's why I say, it's beyond stupidity not to want to get born again. Who would not want this? I mean, it's just mind-boggling. Go to <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, and I learned this yesterday morning too, verse 7. But unto every one of us, how many of us? Every, every one of us is given grace according to the measure of Christ. Every one of us in that seed has everything, right? right? Every one of us to the measure of Christ. Go to Colossians, just a few more pages. Philippians, Colossians, chapter 1, verse 27. Okay? Some of us are getting excited. It says, to whom God would make known what is the richest, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's in that seed when you get born again. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I'm going to read verse 28. Whom we preach, that's why I like teaching this. We preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. We teach them about the new birth. We teach people how to get born again, how to receive that seed of Christ within them, and then we continue to teach them God's word so they can know their rights, what they have in Christ. And then they can learn the keys to changing their mind or renewing their mind to what the Word says, and walk and have power in this day and time. The greatest thing that God has ever given to anybody is in the new birth. It's the miracle of all miracles. It really is. If I was one of those people that loved to shout and stuff, I would be shouting and going, Hallelujah! The new birth, the greatest thing ever given. How can you not be excited about it? How can you not be? 
Well, dear God, we're just thankful and blessed that you've given us this word, and we know it's true because it's written in your word, God. And God, I thank you for the new birth. I'm so blessed about it. I thank you that we can continue to learn and grow in what we have available to us, God. And I thank you that we can walk with power and love and take care of one another. And I thank you for these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter, grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Janes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.